What's up, YouTube? It's Knight, and today I got a Liga B game between JWix and Fortuna. Let's go ahead and jump right in by introducing our blue Aeon Commander with the name of Fortuna. Looks like he's prioritizing Eco for now, but I believe he's going to open up with an Air Factory eventually, although it's a bit of a funky start, and I'll talk about it in just a second. And on the other side, we of course have OSS Jwix spawning as the orange UEF commander and plopping down a quick Air Factory and a Land Factory. So, very interesting. Again, the map is... Arctic Refuge, and I just wanted to comment on something very quickly as a pattern that I've been noticing emerging for a few players is what I th was hoping would happen last year, but it's taken a whole year, I guess, and slowly players, I think, are falling into one faction, and we see more and more players like Jaywix, Polar Bear, of course, Fox Jermelon, are playing one faction and that, that's just a great trend i think and very very interesting but nevertheless let's talk about the game so it looks like fortuna did open with two air factories and not a not the best of ideas i would say when you've not opening up two quick air factories against the uef player i think that's can be a little difficult and Jwix, meanwhile, has transitioned into double air factory, although it looks like he's not producing, prioritizing some eco for now. Going to try and scout around the map while having great map presence right now. He has engineers on both sides, ready to expand and doing very, very well. Now, I, to I talked about in my last video on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. I was going to try and not cast the same players over and over again. Fortuna, by the way, is doing a great job countering these tanks. But I honestly wanted to cast something else. But this week, these two games between Fortuna and Jwix were really, really great, both of them. And, you know, as a series alone, I think <laughs> it won. But also individual games were just spectacular. We do see our first air engagement here which Fortuna looks like he's going to win. And you know, maybe I picked the wrong one. Maybe game two was a bit better and I was going back and forth. But yes, Fortuna does win the air fight here. Going to start picking off that engineer. That could be a bit dangerous, but Jwix is locking down the top left expansion, doing very, very well. I want to thank you guys for commenting on my videos also. I've seen a lot of you starting to comment more and more. I really, really appreciate that, guys. And uh, obviously, all the likes that you guys give me and the subscriptions have also been going up. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, you know, I've had a YouTube channel before. Fortuna, by the way, doing a great job defending Jwix's advancing mobile missile launchers. Yeah, so I've had... Um, I had a YouTube channel before which got close to 100,000 subscribers, but unfortunately I deleted that channel for some reason. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. Jwix, by the way, keeps pushing down the center as well, doing a nice job engaging here, but he just does not have enough wasps. Fortuna really managed to get quite a bit of Weedabuffs out of the three air factories that he had, but doing a very nice job just engaging with the wasps long enough to make them not bomb the mobile missile launchers so that they can go ahead and have a clear line of sight to the main mass extractors that Fortuna has built. And Fortuna has built his factories, like I mentioned before, kind of in the back of his base, which is a really, really weird thing to do. He's going a fourth air factory, which at this point, Jwix hasn't really overcommitted to air, so it's not a terrible idea, but Jwix is pushing hard here down the center, put, putting down a uh, land factory now, probably going to put a shield protecting that point defense and anti-air tower so doing a very very good job so yeah thank you guys so so much for all the engagement you've been giving me and the reason why i haven't been doing any kind of special videos like i would for like 100 subscribers or something is because i've already kind of surpassed all those points but 
I might do something for 250 and then 500 because I still think that is pretty special. And again, I want to thank you guys for everything you guys do to support me. All right, JWix has doing a very, very nice job here, pushing with a lot of mobile missile launchers, splitting very well, but Fortuna also splits fire on the bombing run very well and engaging the wasps and cleaning out quite a bit here. Doing a very, very good job. JWix is pushing with his commander, however, meanwhile, and putting down a heavy point defense, double heavy point defense there. And uh, doing, again, nice, nicely done splitting there, only losing two mobile missile launchers in that run. Fortuna did not split his fire that time. And JWix is slowly taking over the map. He's pushing Fortuna towards the bottom edge of Arctic Refuge here as Fortuna is going to try and use the superior range of Aeon point defenses to try and push back some of these air factories or anti-air towers but unfortunately is just not enough against all of these mobile missile launchers and I think that was a little bit of a mistake you can't really do that with so many mobile missile launchers I think five mobile missile launchers finish maybe even four finish one point defense and JWix is way more than that JWix is now transitioning quite a few of air factories he's putting down four and building two at the same time very impressive looks like struggling a little bit for energy looks like he did yeah he he only had two energy generators up until recently no there was a third one so i'm not sure but definitely transitioning more into that mid to late game requires a little bit more energy production as he continues to uh, <laughs> missile launch i guess that would be the correct verb verbiage <laughs> missile launch against the main core mass extractors of Fortuna as Fortuna is still maintaining his base on the right hand side if JWix just sent a couple of mobile missile launchers especially if he split them I think that would be very very hard to deal with but now there are gunships coming out from Fortuna and you know players like this really like to do this once they're really losing the game that's their last kind of hurrah but against the more experienced players, I think JWix can expect this. He's putting down shield generators, however. I'm not sure that is the correct choice here. I'm not sure what these shield generators would be good for. Well, I guess maybe he's expecting more Weedoo buffs, which in this case, actually, you you could. It's not a, a, a wrong thing to do, but I would scout before I would tech into shield generators there. I think, I think JWix knows that he won by this point. But definitely these gunships, if left unscouted, could present a very big danger, especially if Fortuna is left alone for enough time to get shields. He does not have those shields yet. And yeah, now he definitely sees the gunships. So he finally finishes off the last mass extractor, JWix. Looks like he's putting a little bit of tech into his commander. He's at 25,000. And Fortuna, let's see, still does not have shields. Now losing mass extractors next to his air factories. And, you know, this is going to be a very, very hard path back. Even with the shield generators, not really doing much against gunships. Although, JWix is doing a nice job positioning himself kind of like where the shields overlap. So that might be actually very advantageous. Depends on how Fortuna decides to micro his planes. It looks like there is an air engagement here. The wasps are going to prioritize with the Weedoo buffs while the gunships are going to go straight for the commander. JWix should probably prioritize the gunships. Nevertheless, he does have Hawker on his ACU. Those gunships are not breaking through the shields. JWix has picked the most optimal position to be in between these shields and those gunships just melt away from so much power, firepower from the anarchists coupled with the wasps that have managed to clean up the Weedoo buffs as well. There's Fortuna's ACU is here too, but there's just no chance of breaking through this conglomerate conglomeration of shields here as two point defenses are going to just finish off Fortuna here and a couple of bombers that came out from JWix. Very nicely played by our UEF commander. And I want to show you guys game two. So let's go ahead and hop into that. Game two was played on Emerald Crater with both players grabbing the UEF faction. Fortuna, our blue UEF player, has gone with one air factory opening, two air factory opening for now. And his opponent, JRX, is doing the same thing as our orange UEF commander. After also setting up a fairly nice central position here with six land factories, Fortuna also takes over the left spawn. 
There is an engagement in the center of the map again with the air. This time Jay is getting a little bit of a better engagement. However, Fortuna still wins that engagement. And now with a superior land force and air force, he's sidestepping Jaywix's central location and going straight for the main base. Jaywix, however, is transitioning into that air gantry. Jaywix does end up winning the next air engagement off the back of his newly constructed air fortresses. Despite being reduced to practically nothing around the map and a bunch of air spam coming from Fortuna, one can never underestimate the power of air fortresses as Jaywix manages to clinch an incredible win in game two and becomes our leader in the Liga B table. If you're still watching, give a thumbs up to this video. If you liked the video, leave a comment. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you are blown away by it, check out my Patreon page. This has been Knight. Take care and peace out.